Chapter 9, we're going to pick it up here with about verse 3 in a moment. And, and how beautiful the Father's Word is here in Proverbs. Proverbs being uh, a lesson and lecture in what's right and what's wrong and what happens if you follow which path. And it's a set of instructions that of comparisons. And I, I think it's a beautiful work. Now, we had... We had uh, recorded in the last few chapters a Zer, which is an apostate, who was a harlot. And she had a house and had a banquet. And the opposite of that is wisdom is having a banquet. And she has a house that has seven pillars in it. And, and naturally, seven is the number of spiritual complete, completeness. And we covered in Revelation chapter 3, verses 10, 11, and 12, where God's elect are the pillars in that house. And that's, that's the beauty of being a part of the many-membered body, which is the house of wisdom. Uh, wisdom coming from our Father, of course. But here she's preparing this banquet, uh, wisdom is. This is the banquet you want to attend. Not the other that we covered by uh, Mystery Babylon. You don't want to go to that banquet. So um, she's, as we learned in verse 2, she's killed the fatted calf, the beast, and she's mingled the wine, that is to say it's spiced, and she's furnished her table. Let's pick it up, if we may, with a word of wisdom from our Father then in verse 3 as it continues. And uh, we ask that word of wisdom from him. Verse 3 reads, she hath sent forth her maidens. She crieth upon the highest places of the city. Now, who did she send out to preach this message? The maidens. Well, I didn't know women were supposed to preach. Well, you might get some disappointments uh, when you truly get into God's Word and learn a little truth, huh? Uh, she sends out, this wisdom sends out maidens to carry this message. Uh, in all honesty, the word that is translated maidens here means young persons, and it can be either male or female. But uh, let's give the ladies credit where credit's due because they pick on them so much that uh, let's give them the credit as those messengers. After all, what is a messenger? A messenger is an angel. So therefore, you can understand why we call most ladies angels, just little old angels right here dwelling among us, okay? Verse 4, I'm just making friends and influencing people here, okay? But that's who she sent out. Verse 4, whoso is simple. This word simple means unsuspecting. In other words, ignorant, biblically illiterate. Doesn't know the false Christ is coming. Doesn't know come here from Sikkim. So naturally, they're unsuspecting because they're not watchmen. Whoso is simple, let him turn in hither. That's an invitation. As for him that wanteth understanding, she saith to him. E even when they're un unexpected, un unsuspecting, and, and um, even haven't learned, wisdom here throws the door open to that person. But of course, there was a qualification uh, that wanteth understanding. A lot of people don't. And that's where you have to make the discernment in planting seeds. A lot of times you will plant seeds and you'll have somebody that doesn't want understanding, doesn't care about understanding God's Word, wants nothing to do with God's Word. So don't cast your pearls before swine. Okay, But this, this be those that, that they may be unsuspecting and they may be biblically illiterate, but wisdom is willing to take them in and nurture them with truth. Verse 5, Come eat of my bread and drink of the wine which I have mingled. And of course, you know what the bread and wine is symbolic of to the Christian in this generation. You know why her building has seven pillars, the spiritual completeness, God's election. And we know that, that uh, this bread and wine is the body of Christ. And whereas she is speaking to the many-membered body of Christ. Uh, but here we have the Feast of Feasts, the table of the Lord. That's what she's inviting here ultimately, the highest Sabbath to the Christian. 
because Christ, as it is written in 1 Corinthians chapter 5, verse 6 and 7, Christ became our Passover, this table. Verse 6, forsake the foolish. This word foolish means the heartless, okay? Doesn't have a heart, doesn't care. And live. In other words, um, forsake them and live forever. And go in the way of understanding. There are some people, as I stated earlier, that you can't plant a seed with. And, and they are, this word foolish being heartless, meaning they don't have a mind. They don't have a mind that is seeking the Lord. They could care less. That's a person that you can plant a seed, and if it doesn't grow, hey, kick the dust off your feet and go on to the next, okay? Um, verse 7. He that reproveth a scorner getteth to himself shame. And he that rebuketh a wicked man getteth himself a blot. In other words, um, he's going to turn and he's going to mock you and, um, and will um, uh, certainly uh, run you over and belittle you. You have to protect your cred credibility. This goes along with intuitively knowing who you're planting a seed with. Intuitively knowing if, it, if you're receiving a reception there. If not, you got you a fool, okay? A heartless person. Heartless meaning they don't have a mind. And, and the mind is the seedbed of wisdom. And if they don't have a mind, there's no seedbed, so you wouldn't want to waste seed there, okay? Um, he, he will even mock you for trying, okay? Make light of God, you, and everything you stand for. It's not necessary for you to go through that, though it shouldn't bother you if it does. Again, kick the dust off your feet and march on. That's his problem, not yours. Verse 8, reprove not a scorner, lest he hate thee. Rebuke a wise man, and he will love thee. In other words, tough love is a hard old thing, and when you have uh, that uh, spiritual discernment to know um, when, when a wise man is present, though he may be unsuspecting, if you plant a seed, it's going to grow, and he's going to love you. He's going to love you for caring, for trying. Whereas a heartless one, isn't it kind of sad that we have that type of person, but you've got you've to come to the realism, we do. We have them. They're against the church, they're against Christ, they're against anything that you stand for. And uh, what, what the Father is saying here, um, you, you, don't have to, you don't have to comply with this. You don't have to worry with it, okay? And um, verse 9, give instruction to a wise man, and he will be yet wiser. Teach a just man, and he will increase in learning. He's going to learn more and more and more. And you know, you, you never want to come to the point that you think you know it all. You know, I, I, you know I've, I've studied God's Word for many, many, many years. I've taught it for many, many, many years. I've taught book after book after book over and over and over. I still learn. The Word is pregnant. It grows. And I learn something every time I teach uh, a, a book from God's Word. So you can always, if you will, if you will teach a wise man, there is always something there to learn. Never, never think you have topped out and that you know it all. You don't. Okay. That's an impossibility. God's Word is so complete, but only our Father can attain and understand everything. Uh, when, and, and besides that, growing and learning is a joyful process of, of learning from God's Word. Verse 10, the fear of the Lord is the beginning of wisdom. Don't ever forget that. You learned it back in chapter 1, verse 7. And of course, um, the word fear, as you well know, translates both revere and fear. And reverencing or loving God is in fact, the basic and the beginning of wisdom. That's where it comes from. Why? Because all wisdom comes from Him. 
in the knowledge of the holy, translate it holy one. The knowledge of the holy one is understanding. It's always there. That Holy Spirit will lead you, guide you, direct you. And, and never be afraid to reach out and ask our Father through the Holy Spirit to enlighten you on a certain subject, to give you a message, to give you a truth. He'll always respond when it's needed. And it may be far and few in between, but when it comes, it's fantastic. It's fabulous. Grat latch on to it. And remember, knowledge of the Holy One is understanding, clarity in the simple way that only God Himself can teach. Verse 11, For by me, this is wisdom speaking, for by me thy days shall be multiplied, and the years of thy life shall be increased. A lot of people think that this means longevity. It doesn't. Okay. It means, um, what it's saying is, by me the, thy days shall be multiplied. It means they'll become great. Why? Because you've got wisdom. You've got knowledge. And the years of thy life shall be increased in importance. Okay. Because people will seek you out if you have wisdom for questions, for answers, for guidance, for leadership. That's what wisdom will do for you. Okay in properly translating this particular verse. Uh, and that's why, because it isn't you that's great, and it's not you that's important, it's the wisdom you possess, which is to say the Word of God. Okay. The Word of God is so precious and so wonderful, and when He gifts you to absorb and, and be a messenger, one that He sends out with this... Uh, message as uh, he did the maidens in verse 3 to carry forth that message how precious it is how wonderful it is um, and and so it is verse 12 if thou be wise thou shalt be wise for thyself but if thou scornest if you scorn wisdom okay thou alone shall bear it in other words you only hurt yourself if you seek wisdom, um, you, it, it is wisdom for your own purpose, your own self, that betters you, that comforts you. And don't worry, you'll share it. You can, you know, it's like, it's like holding something hot. You have, to, you have to get rid of it. You have to take that truth and pass it on. Um, never, if God gives you a truth, don't hide it under a bushel. You let it shine from the pedestal of a light and share it with others because it comes from our Father. In other words, it isn't yours. It belongs to the Father. But a person that um, scorneth wisdom only hurts themselves. Well, why would scorning wisdom hurt them? Because they're stupid and they're going to stay stupid. Okay. Stupid is as stupid does. And, and they hurt themselves. But, but that's the beauty of um, Proverbs. It's your choice. You have to take, you have to realize that what God is telling you in wisdom is you have to take responsibility for thyself, for yourself. You, you have to be accountable. You have to desire to have wisdom whereby not only that you can help yourself, but others. And therefore, in reaching out, God will touch you and assist you and help you. But, but if you hate wisdom and if you turn away from it, you just hurt yourself. And how and where you could have been a blessing to others, you're a dud, okay? A dumb dud, good for nothing. Never scorn wisdom. Verse, uh, it's more precious than silver. It's more precious than gold. Okay. Verse 13. A foolish, here we have a little different thought. A foolish woman is clamorous. She is simple and knoweth nothing. This is the contrast in contrast to verse 1, where, where wisdom is building a house and she's having a banquet 
Um, and here we have a, a foolish woman is clamorous. It means she's a ratchet jaw. Just goes on and on and on and never says anything. Okay. I mean, she can talk all day long and will never have said anything that amounts to anything. A fool is as a fool does, okay? And um, uh, verse 14. For she sitteth at the door of her house. She didn't build it. She sitteth at the door of her house on a seat in the high places of the city. Man, I mean, she's always obvious. I mean, that's where she catches people going by unsuspecting, and she, she clambers. Her old ratchet jaw is just really wound tight, okay? And... Um, and there she is where people buy, drive, go by unsuspecting. She's got all the advice in the world, and yet she knows nothing. Okay. Verse 15. She sits in those high places to do what? 15. To call passengers who go right on their ways. Minding their own business, going their own ways. Busy people working, doing God's work. And here's old Ratchet Jaw. Just taking up everybody's time, taking up space, and clamoring on and on and on about nothing, nothing, and nothing. Okay. Well, what can you gain from nothing, nothing, and nothing? Well, nothing. You're never going to gain anything from her. Okay. Verse, um, verse 16. Whoso is simple, that means uh, uh, unsuspecting again, let him turn in hither. Go ahead and stop. And as for him that wanteth understanding, she saith to him. In other words, um, she's going to imitate great religion. Okay? I mean, she's got it, ratchet jaw, knows it all. Okay? And here we got one that is simple. He's, not, he's unsuspecting, but he does want to learn. And don't turn in here is the, is the message. You don't need to listen to a ratchet jaw after you intuitively discern she is. Okay. But what does she say to him? Listen carefully. She whispers, 17, stolen waters are sweet and bread eaten in secret is pleasant. Now, you got to remember where this was written in the the uh, Middle East, where water is a very precious commodity, you know. I mean, in a desert land, water is, um, is not something you want to steal, okay. But what is her great clamoring words of wisdom? Stoling waters are sweet, and, and bread eaten in secret is pleasant, uh, you, you, um, when you go to the Lord's table, you don't do it in secret. Okay? You're not ashamed of the fact that you're partaking of the Lord's table. But you see, this isn't the Lord's table. This is the old, this is the old clamoring one, ratchet jaw. Even call her Mystery Babylon if you want, because ultimately that's what it would turn to. You're never going to learn anything from an unwise fool, okay, and 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 that's the end of it. Other than bad um, information, and so it is. Um, wh when God tests you, I would hope that when you would hear her make these statements, you you would know right away. Hey, this this is bad news. You don't want to be so simple or unsuspecting that you would listen to something like that. Uh, again, bearing in mind that in the desert, stolen waters is a very serious crime. Okay. That's a very serious wrong. Verse 18, but he knoweth not that the dead are there. Now listen to me carefully. He knoweth not that the dead are there and that her guests are in the depths of hell. Now, he didn't realize that um, who this guest of, of, of hell was because the word dead here, it's uh, raphium. You need to know that. That's the fallen angels and the offspring thereof. Okay. 
And if you don't know when you're in the presence of Raphaim, it nails the whole thing as to who you've been talking to, ratchet jawing about, okay? And, and that's why they are called the dead, just as they are in Psalms 110, okay? You start messing around with them in the word suel, grave, hell. You're, you're, you're talking to, you're, you're, not, uh, you're not talking eternal life. You're talking to one of those that is here to deceive and to deliver into the very hands of Satan. Even down, and this is one of the reasons Paul would teach so boldly in 1 Corinthians chapter 11, verse 10, where he said, you want to keep something over your head, speaking to women, maidens that take the word out. You want to keep something over your head. It's not your hair. It's not cutting your hair. It's Christ. And verse 10 tells you why. Because of the angels, the refium, the fallen angels. Okay. Because that's death. Nothing but Satan's own messengers. So, hey, true to the course in Proverbs, you got a choice. You've got two houses. You have the house built by wisdom with the seven pillars, or you have ratchet jaw, Sister Babylon, and she will ultimately lead you to the fallen angels, which is to say Satan's own uh, family. You don't need that. And that's what, um, that's what apostates will do for you. you well, how do I know? Well, whether it aligns with God's Word or not. You know, who is simple? Who is unsuspecting? How many today suspect or know, or is unsuspecting, I should say, that the false Christ returns first? What are they commonly taught? You don't have to worry about the false Christ because you're going to fly away. There's just one big problem with that. That's clamoring. I'm not judging anyone, it's just a fact, okay? And God's Word documents it. And it ends, ends you up in a very bad, bad place. It's called deception. And it's kind of called bedding down with the raphium. You don't, that's the dead, you don't need that, okay? The fallen angels, you don't need that. You need wisdom. And wisdom teaches you, if you wish wisdom, if you want wisdom, seek her early and you will find her. Love wisdom, she will love you. Uh, seek truth and it will always protect you. God protects his own from deception and from the very eyes of Satan himself, giving you power over him. So you want to always take the high road, which is wis the road of wisdom. Okay. Uh, the old ratchet jaw took the high places where she's going to get sit down from there to a low place. Uh, ratchet jaw, ratchet jaw, on and on. It's such a, but it sounds so holy, holy, holy. You want to listen to the Holy One as you were instructed in this chapter. Who is the Holy One? There's only one. How could you be wrong? How could you not know? where there's only one. It's Yahweh, our Heavenly Father. Okay. So what, what a fantastic chapter to follow wisdom calls in chapter 8 is to have the, the um, opposing houses, the house that God builds with wisdom or the house that Satan builds for the raphium. And Maidens were sent out to carry the truth, and the maiden was sent out to ratchet jaw in the byways to unsuspecting people. Well, how could I possibly be, uh, avoid being unsuspecting? Learn the truth, love wisdom, and she'll love you, and you'll never be taken in. Chapter 10 and verse 1, the Proverbs of Solomon a wise son maketh a glad father, but a foolish son is the heaviness of his mother. And this is speaking of Mother Israel here. And you don't want to be foolish to not know who your mother is in that regard. 
and who our Father is, Almighty God. And, um, you know, uh, sometimes if, um, it, 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 and why, well, why should I worry about Mother Israel? Well, because of, of motherhood. You know, sometimes a father, if you get too bad and too far out of line, he may just turn and walk away. But a mother will never give up on a child. They can go down, down, down. And that mother, though she knows probably she, she would be better off if she did the same thing. She's going to stick with that child. I heard a mother one time say, I'm on my way to visit my son. He's in prison. And I thought, whoa, I... I that here is this mother and her son is a prisoner, a jailbird. But she said, you know what? The warden told me he was the best prisoner he had. Can, can you see the motherhood in that? She was proud of her son even though he was in jail because the warden, warden told her he was the best prisoner in jail. So... So a mother will stick with you, and a mother will stand by you when nobody else will. So understand how important Mother Israel is. Okay. Verse 2, treasures of wickedness profit nothing, but righteousness deliver, deliver us from death. Treasures of, will, wis, uh, tra treasures of wickedness that's where you rob, steal, sell drugs. I mean, you, you young people that see them driving big cars around the corner, don't worry. Do you know what will happen? We'll pick them up. We'll take their car and sell it for money to find more of them doing crooked and wickedness. In other words, any treasure that's gained by wickedness is short-lived. It's not what it seems to be. And as a young person, you want to know that coming out the gate. There are no shortcuts to success, but there is a sure, a surety, a guarantee. And that is to gain wisdom and knowledge. And then you have wisdom and knowledge to gain those things legally okay, and righteously. Okay, because righteousness delivers from death. Okay. In other words, you, you find eternal life rather than going to hell. Verse 3, the Lord will not suffer the soul of the righteous to famish. He knows what you need. But he casteth away the substance of the wicked. He, he makes sure that the wicked do not gain anything. He makes sure that their substance is taken away from them. And, and how, what a fool it is that feels he can outsmart Almighty God because God will see to it. God knows what they are even thinking. And the Lord will not suffer the soul of a righteous to famish. You're, you're not going to, the soul, that's your eternal, your nephesh, your, your eternal life. It's not going to hunger. And naturally, in, in as much as we're in Proverbs, what should it hunger for? Wisdom, knowledge. Because wisdom and knowledge is the most precious thing in, in the earth as far as um, getting ahead is concerned, as far as being blessed is concerned. But what God is telling you coming out the gate, it doesn't pay to be wicked. He himself will guarantee you uh, and, and there'll be some right now will say, well, I, I know there are people that have pulled off the perfect crime and gotten away with it. Uh, you should have to see that what their mind does when they try to sleep at night. They're always looking over their shoulder. And besides that, they haven't had their trial yet. They may have had a trial here among little old men. <clears throat> but their main trial is coming before God. And what did God say? He casteth away the substance of the wicked, and he also casteth away the wicked. So don't ever think uh, there's no way that you're going to get away with it, period. Not here, nor not in heaven. Verse 4, uh, by that I mean, you, even if you did get away with it, you've got to live with it here, and you're going to pay the price when you get there. Verse 4, 
He becometh poor that dealeth with the slack hand, but the hand of the diligent maketh rich. You know what slack hands are? That's lazy people. You got slack hands, you're never going to mount a hill of beans. You're never going to have anything. And um, he becometh poor that dealeth with sacked hands. He's poor coming out the gate, and he'll be poor when he, when he goes through the gate, and he'll be poor forever because he, his hands are slack. He's lazy. God really does not like lazy people. And um, this has nothing to do with handicapped people. Understand and know that coming out the gate, okay? But the one that has a hand that is diligent maketh rich. He's going to go somewhere. He works at it. He's going to gain the world. It, you know, it doesn't take much to be happy if you're wise because you have the Father and you have His promises and you're rich, rich, rich because you have eternal life and you have the blessings of God. That's really what you need. And God sees to the rest of it. It may even come a little slow. Be patient. It's there. Verse 5. He that gathereth in summer is a wise son. That means while the crop's out there and the harvest is there, get out there, hump it. Get with it. But he that sleepeth in harvest is a son that causeth shame. Um, now, what, what this applies to also and as well is truth. When, when truth is available, get out there and get it. When wisdom is available, get out there and get it. Don't sleep through it. Don't, don't be daydreaming when you could be absorbing truth and wisdom. You could be bettering yourself. And what do you do? Well, I, I, I'm tired and I have slack hands. Well, you're not going anywhere then, okay? Father likes vivacious people. That, and, and, and like I said, it doesn't have anything to do with handicapped. I'm talking minds here that seek wisdom early. Love wisdom. She will always love you. Don't miss the next lecture. All right, bless your heart. You listen a moment, won't you please?